So you streamline this down to the most consistent version. Yes. And Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the European Championships 2017. Uh, we are now into the top 16. So we've come a long way. Now we're here. Getting on now, isn't it? It's yeah, getting on a bit. It is. It definitely is. What time are we on now? Uh, we're about... Let me check. Half four? Half past four. Ah, so it's not too bad. We're yeah. still quite late into the day, though. Yeah, I'm um, on time. A lot half of our four. players are going to be kind of mentally exhausted from playing so many rounds because they had basically 11 rounds with Swiss. They played three of those today. Yep. Yeah, three of those today. Those and today. Eight yesterday. Now they're in the top 64, they've done the top 32, and now yeah. here we are in the top 16. Yeah. Uh, would we like to look at any stats before oh, yeah. we go in? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's have, have a look. look. You can't get too tired here, guys. If you throw your match right now, you're probably never going to forgive yourself. Oh, yeah. you yes. Are, you are so close, you can almost taste almost taste the world spot. Oh, I thought you were going to come up with some like cool Japanese food that people Something taste. But anyway. I see. Oh. Okay, so um, that's 64. So 64 players slowly became 32. And then those players became 16. the top 16. And wow. so we dropped the Wind Witch, Zodiac Kaiju, Zodiac, and True Draco Zodiac. So it may actually literally just be the one bar of just Zodiac. Everything we'll Zodiac see. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, to wow. the surprise of no one. No. Uh, True Draco Zodiac is actually our feature match for this round. It is. As well. Yes, and we've been told that uh, our player prefers the name Tom. So it's Tom Vanderdop, or Van Dandop, uh, versus Tom Payne from the UK, who's playing pure Zodiac. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a really good UK player. Uh, so what's our nationalities in the top 16? Let's have a quick look. So top 64 was this. And let's just jump straight to the top 16. Boom. So we just have one UK competitor now, which is Tom Payne. Tom Payne, yeah. Um, Italy showing kind of a big force. France still a good, still in there. Um, Germany has dropped down to two from 432. Yeah. Um, so they've lost 430 players. Yeah. I mean, even at this point, if you've got this far in this competition, obviously you're gunning for the world spot, but you've done pretty well, right? Yeah. You've taken out like over a thousand players. Yes, definitely. Which is pretty good. Just three more matches to get one of those seats. Yeah, so let's take a look at our feature match for this round. So, Tom and Tom. Yeah, so, here we can see the bracket. So, in the top left, our backup feature match, Marcello Barberi. And then, just two down is Tom Payne versus another Tom. He's, he's been told that we... We're, gonna, we're told, calling him Tom, are we? Yes, not okay. uh, Engbert Peter. Apparently, okay. that is the name on his passport, but he'd prefer to just be called Tom in the feature. Okay. Tom, Tom, Tom. van den Dopp. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, without any further ado. Yes. Let us go over to the table. Let's crack on. Let's uh, see what these guys are going to put down for us. Okay. So, our players are ready now. Just having a quick chat. Hands are about to be loaded in. We'll give you that information. What I'm seeing loading in is a through blade uh, for. Uh, sorry, I, ha, I was about to say Tom, and then realised that doesn't actually really answer. Correct. Tom Payne. I Tom Payne and Tom. Yeah, I'm gonna go Tom Payne and Tom. Tom Payne and Tom. Okay, so Tom opened the following cards. Boa Baboon, Zodiac Thoroughblade, Zodiac Rapier, True Draco Hatred, Heritage, to Draco ha Hatred. That was more metal than I was hoping. True <laughs> Draco Heritage and Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, over with Tom Payne, we have My Body's Sealed Soul Charge, Dimensional Barrier, Zodiac Ram Ram, and the Rapier has just hit the field. Interestingly, we've seen a lot of people uh, pulling the Soul Charges out of their decks. Um, we've not seen it massively. This tournament. It was only sort of when we got to the top cut that we started seeing Soul Charge. That is true. Again. That is true, yes. I guess a lot of people weren't willing to pay the cost. Uh, it's give, I think giving up uh, Battle Phase might be the problem, but it's just so good. It's still part of the cost. It's a paying 4,000 life points, so they're not getting an attack out of it. Yeah. Don't mind just paying 1,000 life points if that's get what gets the job done. But hey, uh, Mr. Payne has decided to play that in this uh, top cut environment. Mr. Payne. I'm going to have to call him Mr. Payne and Tom. <laughs> Van Den Dom. Mr. Van Den Dom. 
I actually recognize. I don't know if that's correct. Our player from. I don't know where that flag is from. I'm awful with flags. It's the Netherlands. The Netherlands, yes. Yeah. I do recognize our player from the Netherlands here. Uh, he does actually know our judge as well, Thomas. He came over and told us that he preferred to be called Tom. Right. Are you sure he wasn't just giving you his name? No, oh, maybe. And he's like, I prefer Tom as opposed to Thomas. And now we're. <laughs> I prefer Tom as opposed to Engelbert Peter because that's not my name. <laughs> that's maybe. not my name. That's not my name. Well, it's of all the songs you decide to pick up on saying, <laughs> it is that one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, again, as with every single round so far, I'll just explain very quickly what's going on here. If you're brand new to the channel or brand new to Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, they are playing the Zodiac engine, which basically means that rather than having to use two cards to summon cards from your extra deck, which is, as you can see, in the extra deck zone just underneath the field zone there, uh, where you get to choose which cards you would like to bring out with it, as opposed to them being randomized, um, you can just use one monster to make any of those cards, um, well, any of the Zodiac monsters at least. Yeah. Uh, as long as you, so as long as you draw a Zodiac monster, you're in business. So I have something terribly interesting about, about Tom Payne. So he actually hasn't played Yu-Gi-Oh for the past like six months because he's been doing university. Yeah. And he, uh, he showed up on Friday and was like, "Oh yeah, I just I decided to come to Euros. It was the end of university. Uh, I better get I better get into one of these last chance qualifiers because I haven't actually qualified." Uh, so yeah, he he uh, won a last chance qualifier, and now here he is. So uh, yeah, if anyone cool. ever tells you that you can't win from last chance qualifiers, it's right here. So um, an interesting story I've got about Tom Payne was back when I was doing written coverage. Um, it was Nationals of 2014, um, and he was playing in a feature. Um, and in his, in his first written feature, he always liked to do something just a little bit silly, just to kind of show off. So yeah. The first game he played, he played Crazy Box. Oh, I love Crazy Box. Rolled the dice and rolled a one, uh, or a six, with whichever the one is that makes you discard your hand. Oh, uh... One, one of them discards your hand, one of them halves your life points. Yeah, I can't remember which one it is. Yeah. So in the first one, he, he ended up discarding his hand and losing that game. So in the second game, he then won. And in the third game, he decided that he was going to have a little bit of fun with it again. Uh, played Crazy Box. Uh, rolled again. Rolled the opposite number again. And then halved That's his life point. points. <laughs> uh, so hopefully he's uh, not going to look to show off during his feature match yeah. today. Half life points, Mega Morph attack. That would be, that'd be pretty good. Tom Payne's setup is pretty good here. Uh, he's got the Dryden, he's got the Ram Ram as an insurance policy against mass removal. The, he decided to go with Digosto to start with to uh, keep a couple of keep those resources flowing. Uh, sorry, Mr. Payne. Uh, and Tom Van Den Dop has started with Boa Baboon, the Zodiac Frublade Zodiac Rapporteur, which is not his choice of normal summon, True Draco Heritage, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and Zodiac Barrage. So playing through that Dryden is going to be the first order of business. And uh, I believe he the Dryden was used to stop the normal summon through blade. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now he's got the barrage to follow through. Uh, Tom's. Mr. Payne's face down cards is My Body is a Shield. That just sounds too aggressive. I can't keep calling him. Mr. This. Payne. Tom Payne. Tom P. Tom, Tom Payne. Uh, and a Dimensional Barrier. Dimensional Barrier less effect, slightly less effective against the True Draco Zodiac. But without the Dragonic Diagram for Tom Vanderdop, um, he isn't going to be able to start up with a Masterpiece. So the Dimensional Barrier is still very live here, as it would be in any normal zoo matchup. And he he takes out the my body as a shield. Is this our secondary feature match that's just come up? Yep. So we've uh, got Marcello and Christios's decklist. 
and that's a Zodiac mirror match. Yeah, so they, they were actually being uh, deck checked. So, um, yeah, Marcello and Christios were on the, uh, the deck check list for this round. And yeah, we decided it would be totally fine to just give them give them the backup feature match because then we'll definitely be able to get them on uh, yeah. with the extra time that they they get. And there's dimensional barrier. You can usually you can sometimes break the telegraph barrier by how early they use the Dryden if it feels preemptive to where you would have done it you, and your opponent's got back row, you can usually assume that there's a dimensional barrier uh, for their follow-up. Uh, because if they, if they use a dimensional barrier first, they will negate their own uh, Dryden and not be able to take out any of your cards. Yeah. yeah. So that's if you guys are looking on how to make slightly better reads, that's one of the little tricks you can put in your uh, put in your reservoir. Is that the right word? <laughs> Repertoire. 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 Awesome. Uh, Repertoire a reservoir is kind of for like water, right? Big pool yeah. of water. Oh, yeah, you know, big pool of water of tricks. Okay, I'm trying to salvage something yeah, you that are. clearly went wrong. Uh, <laughs> repertoire. Like rat -piar. It's your repertoire. Repertoire. On your gut -piar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're going to see the uh, Ash Blossom being used against the Digosto Emerald. Essentially, uh, slowing Tom down a lot for this reshuffling. Uh, it's, it's taking chunks out of his late late game. Tom is going to have to deal with that uh, Zodiac Barrage this turn in one way or another. Probably takes that out now, actually. No, he goes straight for the Broad Bull. Which is your favorite Zodiac monster, Matt? Dryden. Yeah? Yeah. Well. Just straight up? Yeah, straight up Dryden. It's the one that does the most work. Uh, like all the others are combos, that, but it's the massive disruption you get uh, that your opponent has to look at as well. So it's not even like you've got to hide it under a trap card and force the situation. You just have flat disruption. It's like uh, Artifact's Morale Tack in that regard. They said, well, Morale Tack you hit, but um, in the way that it breaks apart entire two, two card combos. And yourself? Mine's Ram Ram. I think it looks cool. It's little Ram. Ram things. Ram Ram. Ram Ram. Ram Ram. Exactly. And Robert? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Couldn't possibly answer. God. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> terribly sorry. You're quite sorry. You're very, very much well putting me on the spot. No. <laughs> hey, what? No, I, I, I'm sorry. I just couldn't possibly say. Yeah, Tom still holding that Soul Charge. You can hold that until the Whipped game... Out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, he has, he has a whip as well. Uh, he can hold on to that for as long as he needs to, and then when it gets down to the wire, uh, just turn his field into a massive flurry of monsters. Where does he go from here? Lots of damage. Some would use the word tons. It's got 18 and 16 right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely going to have to summon Dryden to get rid of that barrage at some point. Jack and I is going to extend his plays a little bit more before he decides to go attacking. It feels so odd now that they don't have Fusion Substitute in the deck. I don't miss it. Would add a lot to a turn. Yeah. Especially I think we'd still be on day one right now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I just, I will forever remember. Not sure back, that wasn't even the deck that made the most actions in a single turn. During the UK National Championship, we had a true Draco dinosaur deck make about, was it, you think it was about 70 actions? No, it was Jawad who played the 70 actions. He was playing True Draco Zoo. Unless you're thinking of a different match. Are you thinking of a different match? I'm, I'm sure he made Calamities in there. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah, he's playing True Draco Zoo. Sorry. Yeah, he's playing True Draco Zoo. He did like a, a 70 action turn long and then his opponent just goes uh, Chalice, 
Chalice and then Rageki. Yeah. It was it was really short lived though, like seventy actions later, two cards just blew the whole field. And then the Jawad still managed to win that game. Yeah. It was pretty impressive actually. Right. <laughs> so Tom Payne picking up a dimensional barrier and a second whip tail. So he's got a lot of damage he yeah, can push he in has yeah. a ridiculous amount of damage on uh, that board. Vanderdop's filled. And is there anything you can do to stop this damage? No, Vanderdop's a sitting duck here. It's, he's at completely at the mercy of um, Mr. Tom Payne. Payne's, Mr. Payne bringing the pain. The pain train. We've got 1800, 1600, another 800, and, and a Dryden that's he, on zero. He's got the 1200. He's got the two whip tails in his hand, so he's got 2400 damage hidden. So he can go so put them under uh, the. He's got 4000, 5800, 6600. Yeah. And he's also got the option to then detach from the Drydent to... Did one of those round rams get brought back from the Chakanoin? Yeah, they did. Uh, I don't think it can attack if it's brought back from Chakanoin. So right? yeah, it can. It can? Yeah, it can. It's just its effects are negated and can yeah. be used for an active summon. Okay. Yeah, and then there's the two whiptails, and then he can detach um, one whiptail, destroy the... Um, Oh, he's only got one um, Zodiac Exit monster, so it doesn't work quite as well. I just, he just didn't have... He didn't quite have enough damage, so he decided not to burn materials that he didn't need to. Yeah. Makes sense. I think, unless he's still thinking about it. I think he may still be thinking about it. it kind of makes sense to just, just go in here. You're boarded, but you're like, you're, your stuff's already on the board. Why not? Uh, well, he's got his insurance policy with the Ram Ram. Uh, is no, okay, Memphis. Vanderdop playing? Oh, I'm looking at Vanderdop's deck list. Um, he's not playing any Solemn Strikes or anything. So the the only thing he is playing in his main that could uh, pose a problem is the Imperial Order. And there's That's Tornado Dragon. Yep. Yeah, he's, he played this much safer than we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, but it, look at Tom Payne's hand. He's got the two Whip Tails, the Regeki Dimensional Barrier. Dimensional Barrier is going to throw down now. Um, no, he yes he does, and the soul charge, as well as a backup to Vanderdop. He did get the terraform in Bababoon, which is, which would be great if he could resolve it. But the Dryden is going to interrupt the Dragonic diagram because you would ideally destroy the Bababoon, um, get two more Bababoons, get your um, True Draco, and then. Isn't the Ghost Oak going to get rid of the Dryden at that point though? Yeah, but I don't think Tom's worried about it. At that point, he's um, making sure. Yeah, so he's going to... Uh, oh. Vanderdop's going to consider a different line of play. Oh, Dark Hole, yeah. Because uh, he's going to get the Baba Boon effects. Uh, the Baba Boon effect to get the two monsters, and then he can go for an MX Saber Invoker and start <laughs> up his Rapier combo. Stack up all of those monsters. And then Ram Ram's effect is going to get back the Dryden. He's playing he the Emmet Saber. Yep, yeah, yes, he, he is. is. Yeah, but anyone who's he playing would be if he was Bauber playing Boon. Bauber Boon. Yeah. Uh, but Tom's hand is still formidable. Yeah, he's back. got two Whip Tails and. Uh, and a Soul Charge and a Rageki. And the, he get, because of the insurance policy he took out on his field with the Ram Ram, he gets back the Dryden. And also Dimensional Barrier, so that uh, MX Saber and Vocal Play may not even happen. Yeah, Bob. Uh, just got to remember the attack of uh, Baba Boon. I think it was 1,300. Was it 800? It was 800? Yeah, there's not, it's not huge. It's small. Um, not quite sure why it hasn't come up on that. Okay, you can get double whip tail. Watch. And then banish the uh, Baba Boon as well. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it was twelve. It's twelve hundred. Yeah, let me let me double check. Yeah, it says twelve hundred on the screen. Ah, that's fine. Then. Wonder if you should have considered double whip tail. Maybe that's yeah, a little bit overextended. So he could have got the 1,200 damage in and then kept the armed droid. And I think the idea is that he wanted to keep the um, keep at least one zoom monster in hand. Yeah, so he can actually fire off on his next turn because yeah. he didn't actually he wasn't forced to use his uh, dimensional barrier there, which is very important. Down comes the whip tail. 
and he's looking at that face down, but it's just a terraforming. He's trying to psych him out. It's like, Ooh, I'm getting ready to play this dimensional barrier. Yeah. At least make him have a, you know, think twice about it. See, I think I'd really try and mess with my opponent if I was in the feature. I'd be like looking at this and looking at my face down card and going, I've got short circuit, but I just don't have any battery men in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the kind of person that ends up in the feature match area, <laughs> so. It's not a terrible strategy, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, if, yeah, definitely. If I was in the future, Macho, you'd want you want to you want to really psych your opponent out. Mm -hmm. Just pretend to be that guy who's got a got a deck that's weird. Then it's Robert. It's probably Gladiator Beast. I just really need to draw into Harpy's Pet Dragon. What kind of deck are you building? Yeah, even in Harpy's, you don't <laughs> want to draw into Harpy's Pet Dragon. What deck are you building? Just the way it works. <laughs> oh dear. Second iron, and we're going to start seeing uh, Tom Payne building his field again. On the ground up. Tiger Mortar touching the check and iron to put a bunch of attack points. Uh, free blade, that's 1600 additional attack being added to that monster. And then we got the Dryden't. The Dryden can take off the uh, Plague Mortar to destroy the Ram Ram and put a Whiptail back on the field. Oh, he's pretending to play that terraforming. He really wants him to hit it. <laughs> yep, I'm going to pick up my card. Yep, I, see, go. I see how it goes. Didn't let him see that it was a terraforming either. Yeah. Very clever. Could have been anything, could have been a short circuit. It's not short circuit. Glad the ATB's chariot. It could even be a boat. It could even be a boat. Yeah. It could even be a boat. Could it, a, what do you mean? A what? boat. A boat? It could ah. even be a boat. Yomi ship. We could take the boat. Are you suggesting it's a Yomi ship he's set in his band trap zone? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's take a look at the poll. Make sure that you guys are... Actually voting in it. Yeah. Ooh, so we've got uh, Tom Vandendop, a favourite to win at the moment. Come on, guys. You need to be voting. It's See literally it. going across the bottom of the screen right now who is going to win in the feature match vote now it only takes a second guys and it's a whole lot of fun your vote doesn't actually affect the game that is played but we'll read out what you're saying we won't take away your ranking points if you get it wrong yeah don't, don't worry <laughs> you're not risking anything here. this isn't a shadow game just let us know uh, looking at the side deck um Let's see, Vanderdop has going first. Hmm. Dimensional barrier. Yeah, a lot of he's got um, a lot of stuff for going second, but um like he's got things like drawn lockbirds, he's got ghost reaper and winter cherries. Uh, and well anti spell fragrance it's a possibility, it's not the best in this. No? And he's got some kaijus. Well, the thing with anti-spell fragrance is it should, in, on paper, it's great because they've got all of the um, fire formation tankies, the terror, uh, possibly terraforming, depending on which variant they're playing. And but so do you. The yeah, well, that's the thing. You're you're handicapping yourself, and they're also a Dryden answers your can answer your uh, anti-spell fragrance. Yeah. So it's not really a sure thing. It's very, very good against you can just get Dryden out super easy. So. Dryden. And Tornado Dragon as well. Um, very, very effective against a large number of decks, but I'm not convinced. Not convinced. On anti-spell. What about over here on Tom Payne's deck list? Really standard stuff. Yeah, super yeah. standard? Yeah. Forbidden Apocrypha, Cosmic Cyclones, Tron Lotbird, Warning. Everything else, super duper standard. He's, he's already main decking three dimensional barriers, three my bodies. His deck looks oddly like Marcello's, in fact, apart from he is playing uh, Ash Blossoms. Well, the yep. high caliber players generally come to the same conclusions from their testing. Yeah. Um, Many an enemy controller, for example. Like, I don't doubt for a second these guys don't just go through the card database and browse every single possible option 
Yeah. They'll look at a scenario and say, is there an easy card that changes the way I look at this scenario? I was doing that when I was playing. And my body's a shield. It's the... Uh, it's a good idea. It's the hot tech. And Shuffle Reborn is also something else. It's... Uh, How spicy? Sort of very, very spicy. You'd say like a five? A five for Shuffle Reborn? No, I, not not no. not, You're not five, to a not five, on anything, five are you? chilies. No, because then I'm putting my name on it. Yeah, you know, and if I'm if I'm putting my name on it, I gotta be really well, darn my buddy sure. a shield. I would put. You're proud of it. I, I, I would put a five it. on my buddy's shield. A spicy tech. When it first started appearing, I would have definitely given it a high rating. Yeah. Now, now it's been around for a while. It's like people have gone a little bit used it's to starting the taste. to mellow. Somebody to mellow somebody out. put some put some mint yogurt in there. No, like oh, let's try mixing oh it up a little bit and. Okay, uh, Marcello has just won his first game in the back of pitch match. Yep. Yeah, unstoppable is not the word. Has he dropped a single duel this entire tournament? No. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, yeah he's, he's X. -O. No, 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 not oh, matches. A single, I mean, duel. single duel. Oh. Yeah, probably. I mean, come on, he's not that good. Give <laughs> him a chance. I don't know. You're kind of bigging him up. Uh, to be fair, unstoppable not being the word means he's stoppable. <laughs> stoppable in some situations, not others. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, here we go. The hands are loaded in, and let's do this. So, Tom Payne has got a Zuniac Thoroughblade, a Zuniac Ram Ram Raigeki Soul Charge, and he's just got rid of that Ash Blossom. Uh, over on the other side, we've got a Tom again, uh, who has a masterpiece in his hand, it's Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. He's terraforming, I believe it's actually Ash Blossom there, and I can't quite see, because of the glare, what that card is. But he does... Oh, actually, no, it wasn't it's, that they were terraformed, um... because he does have his... Uh, Field spell on the field is a Dragonic Diagram. Ah, the Ash Blossom was the Baba Boon. Was ah. it? No. Mm. No, he's uh, the Ash Blossom, the terraforming. And that's two Baba Boons on the field. They had been removed from the last yep. game, okay. so it's almost like our judges were psychic. Baba Boon. I like Baba Boon. There was a tree at the uh, UK Nationals venue. That looked exactly like a bow tree, which is really small. And at the end, I only noticed it at the end of the event and realised that we should have printed off Baba Boon's face to put onto it. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. just a fancy way of littering? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crime in some places. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Check you out, you rebel. All right. Uh, MX Saber Invoker, likely to be the XE monster of choice with um. these. Two a True King's Return, Anti Spell Fragrance, and Zodiac Barrage. Yeah, the Spell Fragrance is coming in, and that is going to be extremely good with the Masterpiece. Uh, as Definitely soon as your opponent sets the spells, you can just take them out as well. Oh, well, there goes. He's going to be able to root right, right in. And then it's going to blank the Regeki in Tom's hand. So I stand corrected, the Anti Spell Fragrance being very good in this situation. He but just this it. situation. It's a situational card. I mean, all cards are situational. Mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far to say anti spell is super situational. I, I wasn't sure. Thinking about the possible lines of play, how I felt about it, but uh, it certainly seems to be correct for how things turned out. That's an American print MX Saber Invoker. You can okay. spot that from here. Yeah. How do you know? The secret rare. Foil looks different to oh. to the European print ones. Well, get you Luke Withington. Yeah. Spotting rarity from a mile away. Yeah. You can definitely tell he was kind of the, the, the hawking player. At the, when he's walking around for a trade, he's like, oh, there no, it is. Shiny. Yeah. The, the proper magpie. Oh, yeah. God, DT Terminal. Wait. No D Terminal. <laughs> <laughs> you need to me. stop that. <laughs> you need to stop that. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> that was, that was being rude to you, there, man. That's, to be honest, that's exactly what I used to do. So <laughs> it's, pr it's a pretty fair, uh, pretty fair rendition, to be honest. <laughs> well, even, even when I started working for Konami and I couldn't play anymore, and I went over to the US for the World Championships, we went to visit a star with the players. It's one of the one of the treats that the players got was mm -hmm. to go visit one of the really big local stores. I was there and I was like, hey, hey, uh, you got any DT cards? <laughs> I, was, I was looking around for them. Unfortunately, they didn't have a dual terminal. I was pretty sad. So I feel like I need to get one. The dual terminals? Yeah. Standard line of plays here. Now, just again, 
for new people. They're just getting into Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, the reason why it says True Draco next to, or True Draco next to Zodiac there, is because of that masterpiece card that is sat straight in Tom's hand. Um, it's basically, you can tribute continuous spell and trap cards as well as monsters to be able to summon it, and whatever you use to tribute to summon it, it then becomes uh, well, unaffected by the effects of, the, of those cards. So spell cards, trap cards, monster effects. And it also has a pretty nice quick effect, which allows you to get rid of continuous spell and trap cards from your graveyard uh, to disrupt plays. Oh, the True Draco Heritage, that's huge. Uh, that gives the extra normal summon. Um, he is most likely going to use uh, True King's Return to set up a tribute summon in the middle of his opponent's turn. Um, because then he can just uh, disrupt his opponent additionally by two more times, because the True King will take a multi-giant when it goes away and the mass piece. But True King Return in itself is a very strong card. Just being able to bring back, uh, keep that masterpiece recurring uh, is very strong. But then you wouldn't really want to give up the anti-spell fragrance. And now uh, Vanderdop doesn't need to make that decision if he doesn't want to. He's got the heritage where he could just get the extra normal summon and then uh, tribute over. This Any is of his a monsters. Pretty strong board here. Yeah, that's um Yeah, he decides that he's gonna leave himself the option to tribute summon the masterpiece in his opponent's turn and start to spell for immediately. Him. Really actually quite hurting Tom Payne there. Rageki's soul charge. Just trying to decide whether he wants to react to this or not. Yep, this card's the Ram Ram draws. It's a spell card. Not going to be usable uh, this turn. In fact, the option that he could go for is if he goes, yeah, if uh, that yeah, didn't get taken out, he could have just made a some of the Dryden, and yeah, that's going to make Tom. Yeah, he's just going straight into straight into game three. Absolutely huge build up from uh, Vanderdop there. Yeah, if Vanderdop had a not used the Dryden there, Tom would have had the option of summoning the Dryden and then being able to chain the quick effect, take out the anti spell fragrance, and then uh, make the plays with the Regeki. But he was still going to be then facing down the uh, various the masterpiece um, as Tom, well. Tom Payne just looked like visually crushed after that. After oh, that, that was game. a very strong start from Vanderdop with the, a True Draco side. And he's the last True Draco in the tournament. Yeah. I honestly thought that was a hands down the, the deck to win, but apparently Pure Zoo is where the money was at. Well, it only takes one. That's, uh, why is it Vice? Uh, what do you got for Tom Payne's deck there uh, that's likely to come in if he goes first? Well, Tom can now lead out with the anti-spell fragrances if he so chooses. He's the Abyss Dwellers. He's got two in his side deck. Yep. Uh, also pretty good against the True King spells and traps. Um, he got Solemn Warning. Forbidden. Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Sorry, I couldn't read that from the handwriting. Um, and Cosmic Cyclone is also very, very good for this matchup. So uh, we're going to show the poll as well. So you guys still think that Tom Payne is going to win here? Yeah, that's actually switched. Everybody thought that uh, Tom Vandendorp was going to win before, and that's actually changed to 62% in the favor of Tom Payne. Going, yeah. uh, going first does heavily favor Tom. Uh, Trigrecos are very good at going second as well, though, yeah. so I don't want to count them out. Yet. Okay, so, so yeah, you, can can see. See. Yeah. you can see it on your screen now. How many votes is that? In total, that's 47. Guys, you're slacking. Come on. We know there's more of you watching. We know more of you is watching. Please, take part. Uh, come, come and say, let us know who you think is going to win. You can do it.
And we're going to be getting ready for this final game of this set. Right now, hands are going to be loading in. Um, let's see for Vanderdot terraforming. My body's a shield. Ba -ba Baboon. Uh, I think that's a true Draco diagram. And a Zodiac Barrage, maybe. There's about eight minutes remaining on time here. Tom has opened many, many normal summons. Um, but there's no hand traps for Vanderdop. So he's going to make a Rapier play, and he's got Imperial Order as his only, uh, only trap card for Vanderdop's turn. But we, we've seen how far a uh, Rapier can get you. Uh, we do know that Vanderdop has the My Body's a Shield, so he's going to ha immediately have the out to the Dryden't. But then the question is, for Tom, do you use Imperial Order? Um, mm. We saw what happened last time someone decided to use Imperial Order. It did backfire, but at the same time, it could have gone completely the other way with so many draws in the deck. Yeah, it could have. We may see it go the other way this time. Because uh, if Tom does set that Imperial Order, though, it is going to leave uh, Tom Vandendop at a huge disadvantage. He's got four spells in his hand, and that uh, one terraform, uh, sorry, that one Imperial Order would completely shut him down. Can Apart from that, those. bow baboon. Can we see Imperial Order? Yeah, uh, of course you can. can. Do just uh, oh, and he this. drew a dark hole. Um, Probably gonna get Dark Hole to open with because there's no. Okay, I was, I was I was interested in whether you could play True Draco Heritage, and then tribute it for a masterpiece. Still, mm. the answer is yes because it just negates its effect. Response. Yeah, uh, he does. He does. Oh, oh. <laughs> looking back oh. at his hand and going, winces because it's that's uh. super green. <laughs> That's super, super green. Tom Payne does have the two whip tails in his hand. Just, there, oh, good there game. We he go. just surrenders. Wow, he's just like, look at my hand. I can't do anything. A sea of green <laughs> against one king. Wow. So One um, king to bl blank them all. Yeah. So let's go to our post-match discussion and talk about that.